Yo, what's good, YouTube? Sam Crow here, aka Scoop, back with the uh, ICBAD League Season 2, Week Number 4, and we're taking on the Memphis Bewares, coached by Odds 1. Um, really cool guy, uh, got a phenomenal squad that he inherited from Phantom Base, aka Tyler. That being said, we'll talk about the teams for a second and then get into the uh, prep talk and the battle. So, my opponents are rocking the Lander Sperry and Taco Coco, that nice ball turn core with the uh, with the uh, with the nice synergy there, Greninja, Point, Megalodius. Um, I didn't even know that thing was allowed. Rotom Heat, Feral Thorn, Toxapex, Volbeat, Wigglytuff, Hariyama, and the Zangers. Um, where his Z1 users are Tapu. What? Um, excuse me, his uh. Just one second. His Z move uses Arlander, Therian, Tapu Coco, and Volbeat. Where our team is um, Magirna, Zapdos, Dragonite, Suicune, Crocodile, Donphan, Alola Marowak, Bronzong, Crogonal, Licky Licky, Tauros. Um, where Magirna, Crocodile, and Dragonite are our Z move users. Um, so he's got some pretty, pretty funky, scary stuff. <laughs> um, Landish Therian, one of the best mods in the format. Topo Coco as well. Uh, Megalodius as well. Toxapex as well. Um, we've got a very, very annoying core. Rotom Heat, Ferrothorn, and Toxapex. That's just fucking nasty. Um, Greninja and Coco are really nice revenge killers. So, uh, to combat this team, we have a... Uh, okay, first of all, Megalodius is a huge threat, so my team's adequately prepared for that. Um, with my immediate answer being a specially defensive leftovers Magirna with Heart Swap, Dazzling Gleam, Volt Switch, and Pain Split, where I can uh, Heart Swap up on any uh, Calm Mind Lottius sets, can Pain Split up, uh, Dazzling Gleam to uh, nuke things, and then Volt Switch just to get out of there if I can't really hurt something like a Ferrothorn or a Rotom Heat. Uh, potentially Heart Switch out on Rotom Heat if it's uh, potentially offensive or something like that. Um, this thing can steal stats from uh, Tapu Coco as well. Um, and I guess that's basically it. Nothing else really wants to set up, um, especially on the special side, I should say. Um, and, like, outside, well, see the thing he brings is Lander Sedarian, Rotom Heat, Volbeat, um, Ferrothorn, Toxpex, and Latius, where Dazzling Gleam is going to hit the Landorus, the Volbeat, and the Latius pretty hard. Um, and then the other mines, it's not going to hit hard at all. So, um, bringing like a Shift Gear or a Calm Mine or a Trick Room set this week with Magnum, it's just it wasn't going to work out because he had so many checks. Um, that being said, um, our next one is going to be a Wise Glasses Zapdos with Thunderbolt, Heat Wave, Hidden Power, Ice, and Roost. Um, enough speed to outpace Lander Therian, um, max special attack, and the rest in HP. This thing just, uh, just hits hard. It, it breaks its core um, once the Rotom Heat's beat down, which rocks and uh, Dragon Eye. My team's going to pressure the Rotom Heat, um, and I have an awesome check to it anyway uh, that we'll get to in a second. So, uh, Wise Glasses, Thunderbolt from Max Special Attack. <laughs> so, Zapdos so Rocks base 125 Special Attack. It's really, uh, really overlooked a lot, I think. Um, Thunderbolt's 2 hit KO in any, any set of Toxapex. Uh, Heat Waves, 2 hit KO in any set of Feral Thorn. Potentially Oko and, um, Volbeat's drop into a Heat Wave. Uh, Megalodius has taken over half from Hidden Power Ice, and that thing's really, really bulky. Unless it sets up or something, then, then, uh, which is why I have multiple checks to that thing. Um, can't really damage Rotom Heat. Lander Sterian drops to the Hidden Power Ice, unless it's Scarf, of course. So, uh, is that does also, like, it, it doesn't abuse the electric terrain, but it can make you, uh, like, what's the word? It can make you play differently with your Coco. Um, which is important in my opinion. So, uh, he also has, what, um, the, uh, well, I guess it's not too big of a threat offensively. 
So, yeah, there's no really need to talk about that. Um, next up, we got the Dragonite, our boy OG here with the Dragonium Z multi skill this week with uh, what is my speed investment here? I think I'm outpacing. Let's see here. I'm outpacing. Okay, so he's got some huge speed gaps where like Dragonite outspeeds everything except, you know, his offensive mons. Like, I think his slowest offensive mon is like Landers Therian or Zangoose or something. And Dragonite can't even come close to outspeeding those. So, what I have my Dragonite setting at is um, enough speed to outspeed Topple Coco after a Dragon Dance. So, if I get a Dragon Dance up, I'm going to be faster than Topple Coco. I have Dragon Claw to hit uh, literally everything, Earthquake to hit um, Topple Coco and the Ferrothorn and Extreme Speed just to pick things off. Um, after Dragon Dance, Dragonium Z knocks out uh, Lander's Therian if it has no bolt. Um, that's uh, that's if I'm not intimidated, by the way. Um, and it, like this thing can just do massive amounts of damage to a lot of things. It can set up on Ferrothorn, can set up on uh, Rotom Heat. They could potentially be locked into a fire type attack or an electric type attack, even. Um, just a really, really good, like breaker uh, potentially a late game cleaner or wind condition or something like that um dragon i can put in the work so next up we got a bomb dog here with stealth rock jar ball hidden power ice and toxic got the hidden power ice there because landers is gonna most likely want to switch in on this um fair or random heat's gonna want to switch in on this as well and that's why i got the toxic if i can toxic that then it puts zap those in a really good position later in the match Stealth Rock and Jarball just hit this team incredibly hard. Um, well, that's not that incredibly hard. Jarball hits things like uh, Megalodios um, and the uh, Top of Coco pretty hard. Uh, hits Greninja pretty hard too, and it's a resist. Get the Culverberry because, uh, like, this is kind of a Landers check. It's not really a Landers check, but it's kind of a Landers check because it resists the fly immune to earthquake and uh, I got the cobra berry for like knockoff or dark dark hole eclipse or whatever um yeah bronze on just can be really really good set up my stealth rocks and I uh, pressure his team to uh defog if he even packs defog um, I don't see him packing defog with things like toxic spikes spikes it looks like he brings hazard stack Versus me, uh, Landish probably Stealth Rocker, Ferrothorn with the spikes, and Toxic Pex with the Toxic Spikes. So that's uh, noteworthy in my opinion. So next up we got the uh, the Alolan Marowak. It's a max specially defensive set with the Lightning Rod, Leftovers, Shadow Bone, Fire Punch, Rest, and Sleep Talk. Designated counter to the Rotom Heat, and really nothing else to say about that. And it, I guess it could work against the Ferrothorn and the uh, Topo Coco as well. Next up, we have uh, um, like a a really really bulky Licky Licky with uh, not max HP but enough HP to uh, like be super bulky on both sides. I got the Sassy Nature, um, 124 EVs in Spadef, 224 EVs in defense. Puts both defenses at 282, 160 HP EVs, puts me at 401 HP. Thing carries Ice Beam for the Landers, Earthquake for the um, Top of Coco. And the Oblivious, so I cannot be taunted. Anyways, that's going to be it. We can hop into the battle now and see how things play out. So I'm going to lead that boost because it leads off well against everything. And he goes straight for the Tobo as I go for the Heat Wave. Um, bopping it pretty well, um, and here I'm going to click the heat wave once again, just in case, uh, I didn't know really what he wanted to go into there, could have clicked hidden power ice, um, here I go into my Magirna, and I'm going to heart swap and take this thing, uh, special attack, now I could have clicked dazzling wing and put him in range of something, but just taking his, uh, taking his stat changes and then switching out to my bronze arm seemed like the best play to me, um, here I can set up my rocks, throw off a toxic, uh, I think I'm going to get up my rocks here because it pressures the Rotom and Zapdos is looking like uh, a win condition here. So he goes for the uh, Shadow Ball once again. Because I'm going to be able to, I think, throw off a wish here with my Leaky Leaky. 
go into my Maguna and uh, get my wish back here. So I guess for the Toxic Fox, four of my uh, six Marms are not affected, so this doesn't really bother me. And I'm just going to bolt switch out here. No reason to click anything else. Go into my Zapdos and start pressuring this team a little bit. As it looks like I may defog, I may click Thunderbolt or something like that. I am just going to click Thunderbolt. It's my hardest hitting attack. I'm predicting him to go into his Rotom Heat. I switch out to Dragonite. And my opponent here makes a mindless Scald play because he would have been two hit KO'd by Thunderbolt. Um, and if he switched into Rotom, he takes rocks and up to uh, at least 26% from Thunderbolt. And meaning he would have been at half, meaning he comes in on rocks again and takes another Thunderbolt, he drops. Meaning Zapdos goes ham on the rest of his team, especially once Latios goes down, or Megalodius goes down. Um, <laughs> bad plays are rewarded sometimes. Uh, this is no different. Here I'm going to drag a dance up, see if I can get anything out of it. He does carry the haze though, so I'm not going to get anything out of this. I'm going to hard switch back out to my Zapdos as he clicks Scald here, I believe. Doesn't get the burn, which is fine by me. And here I can click the Thunderbolt, show him that he shouldn't have played around. Um, he goes for a Scald again and gets the burn. No big deal, I don't think. Here I can click uh, Thunderbolt again as uh, it will knock him out. He is forced out here. Goes into his Ferrothorn as I roost up. So, not bad here. I am going to click the Heat Wave as he goes out into the Megalodius. Uh, no real reason to make any predictions here. I don't have to. Um, as he goes for the Ice Beam here, it brings me really low. As I go for the Hidden Power Ice, and bring him really low. Uh, really low too. I'm going to go out to my Magirna here, predicting the uh, the Ice Beam again. Goes for the Shadow Ball, predicting my Bronze Zone, and then the Hidden Power Ground. As I'm just going to Bolt Switch out here. No real reason to do anything else. Extreme Speed still knocks this thing out, even with the burn damage, or the burn uh, nerf, I should say. So he brings out his Landers thing in here, and I don't want to be set up fighter, so I'm going to switch out here into my Licky Licky. I know he can't, uh, he can't get the double dance up. He can get one of them, but not both against me, because if he clicks Rock Polish here, then I will be able to uh, two hit KO him before he two hit KOs me. And if he, uh, and if he clicks one or the other, then basically if he clicked short sense here, then he too it KOs me as I put him in range to die to Zapdos without the rock polish. But if he rock polishes, then Sebi here will knock him out with the two it KO'd ice beam. And uh, yeah, basically he couldn't get both dances up here. I'm going to click the Ice Beam. So it clicks the Earthquake, but uh, I'm EV'd to live. He is packing the Yachi Berry, though, so really nice. Um, but he's going to be able to take out my Leaky Leaky here. I'm bringing my Zapdos here because I know I can click the Hidden Power Ice and uh, live the burn damage, which is really nice for me. As he uh, He's actually going to bring the Rotom Heat in here. As I go into my Al Alola Marowak, like I said, designated check to this thing. Um, uh, just click the shadow bone here. Don't really need to predict anything. Just get damage off. Zapdos is looking like I can win this match if I can get him in without uh, without rocks going up, which is going to be uh, very important. So uh, so basically here, my play is to sack something and get Zapdos in for free. So, I need Bronzon to be taking damage. I definitely didn't need this to happen. I figured he would go out into the Rotom, so I tried to throw off the Toxic again. Um, however, I do think the Ferrothorn doesn't carry rocks. I think rocks were on Landorus. I think, like I said, I think Ferrothorn has spikes, the T spikes on the Toxapex, and the rocks on the Landorus. So, I'm not fearing the rocks going up from the Ferrothorn. And I can just click the fire punch here and knock that bad boy out. As he goes into the bowl beat, sacks that thing off to the Lola Merwick. And now he can bring back in his Toxapex and click Scald or 
baneful bunker, whatever he wants to click. I go for the shadow bunker and get the defense drop. So not bad at all. Um, really, it's not bad at all. Um, with leftovers and the lead seed, though, I am forced to um, rest up here, predicting the baneful bunker. Um, I can rest up here and then take another scald, switch out, whatever. Um, I'm gonna switch out here into my bronze on again. Like I said, I'm trying to sack this thing off and get Zapdos in for free. As he is gonna click scalding in here. I didn't know if he would. I didn't know if he'd go into the road and we're going to the Ferrothorn or what. So uh, I'm going to wait until I can rest up again and then switch out into my bronze on, sacking that thing off once and for all. And finally it goes down. Now I can bring in my Zapdos here and click the Roost as he goes into his Ferrothorn. Which uh, um, it hasn't shown leftovers I don't think. But I didn't think it would be an Aquabarry and even if it was it couldn't do much back to me. So my play was definitely there to uh, just click the Heat Wave. Knocks out the Ferrothorn. He goes into the Rotom and doubles out to his pecs, predicted my Alola and Marowak, which is not a bad play whatsoever. I get my Rest Talk off, get the Shadow Bone as he goes for the Scald. And now I'm going to wake up and uh, I'm just going to click Rest again. And uh, yeah, so he just goes for the Scald again. And here I'm just going to go into my Zapdos knowing I can take a Scald. Even if it's a critical hit, I can take a Scald. Um, and burn damage as well. I would have lived on like two or three percent um, if he got max rolls with a crit or something like that. Here I'm just going to uh, continue to roost up. Actually, I go for the Thunderbolt here knowing uh, he's probably going to switch out and that it would, uh, in conjunction with rocks, knock out the Rotom Heat. He brings back in his Toxapex here and I'm just going to click the Thunderbolt twice because he can't knock me out. And uh, that's going to be game. He actually chooses to go for the Haze. Um, I'm not sure why. I guess he just wanted to speed the game up. I think he actually said that in the chat. But yeah, it's going to be a good game. And we're going to move on to 3-1 and one after defeating Odds here, coach of the Memphis Bewares. Um, and yeah, I want to know what you thought about the prep and the battle um, and all the good stuff. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.